It's not in my nature. Get your feet off the bottom. I don't think you want me to do that. Pick your feet up! As you wish. Ready? What? No. No, no. No, no. no! Next time, you'll think twice. Let me just go over the details and see if I have them in order here. You were in pursuit of this individual for over six and a half days. Over roughly 1,700 kilometers of deep wilderness. In pursuit of an individual you suspected was guilty of... Littering, sir. Ah. Uh, I was hoping I had read that incorrectly. Because, you see, in, in the course of the pursuit of this... Litterbug, you effectively destroyed three riverboats, two light aircraft, four ATV, and one punt. The punt was purely accidental, sir. As they so often are, aren't they? Uh, tell me, Constable, was there something in the nature of this man's litter that would justify the destruction of over $733,000 worth of private property? Yes, sir. Volume. Volume? And content. What kind of volume and content are we talking about? Well, at first it seemed to be domestic, a, a village dumping ground. But there was a telltale odor, sir, one that I'm sure that you would recognize, like chicken parts. Farts? Parts. Closer inspection revealed it to be the banned chemical known as DES, or diethylene. Well, bringing the drums in on cruise ships through the deep port at Skagway, then hauling them over the White Pass with the intent Local of inhabitants, in an expression river. of their deep appreciation of the RCMP, have recommended that you, sir, be bestowed with the title of Honorary Tribal Elder. Constable Fraser, there's a call for you from Chicago. Hello, Ray. Hey, Benny, how's the vacation going? That's everything a Mountie could ask for, Ray. Lots of fresh air, plenty of exercise. How are things in Chicago? Oh, uh, you know, Benny, Chicago, Chicago. Well, listen, I'm just calling to let you know that I may not be there at the train to pick you up. Well, that's no hardship, Ray. I have legs. I can walk. I know you have legs, Benny. That's not the point. I'm just calling to let you know that. You may be on your own for a while. Is something wrong? 
no, why would anything be wrong? I'm just calling to let you know that I'd like to be there to pick you up, but if I can't be there, it's not because I didn't want to be, it's because something came up. You sure everything's all right? <laughs> Look, Benny, I, I don't know if they have a similar thing up there in Canada, but down here in America, we have this thing called friendship. And this is something that a friend would do. Like, for example, if one friend calls another friend and he's supposed to meet him at a certain time in a certain place and he can't be there, he usually calls him to let him know. So everything is all right then? <sighs> yeah, Benny. Everything is all right. Well, that's good to hear, Ray. It's good to hear your voice. Listen, um... I want you to have a safe trip. And I will be in touch. All right, Ray. You understand that, uh... I will be in touch. As a friend? Yeah, Benny. As a friend. For God's sake. I think I provided ample explanation. Ray was otherwise engaged, and taxi policy precludes the transportation of wolves. Come on. Aside from which, we're almost home. At the end of the alley, turn right, cross the street, climb the stairs, won't be as snug as bugs in a fire. Not an easy thing to lose a home. No. Your mother and I had a cabin north of Clyde River, burned right to the ground. A kerosene error. My fault. Your mother and I slept in an igloo for four months while I rebuilt it. it the longest time we spent together. I didn't know that. Oh, you weren't born yet, son. In fact, all that time spent in that igloo sort of started the ball rolling, conceptually. Speaking. But uh, I wouldn't let this get to you. Something good might come from it. It did for me. You know, Dad, all the years you were alive, and now since you've been dead, you never, you never talked like this. 
but you never told me. I didn't tell you about Dirt McGurk? Oh, yeah, I, I chased that rat for years. He walked right up to the igloo. Didn't think there was a Mountie inside. Easiest arrest I ever made. Buck up. Died in your throat. Not yet. Uh, Detective Huey, have you seen Detective Vecchio? You mean Ray? Yes, Ray Vecchio, the detective. Uh, no, the lunchroom, maybe. Ah, thank you kindly. Oh, before I forget, I brought you a little something from the territories. Genuine beluga whalebone. Hmm. What is it? That's a sex sign. What's a sex sign? Well, it's a very handy little device. Let's say, for instance, you're tracking a suspect. You can use this to triangulate your location. Sure, if you find yourself in a vast open territory with no distinguishing landmarks. Yeah. I can see how this can come in real handy in Chicago, Frazier. Glad you like it. Elaine. Hey, sir. How was your vacation? Oh, very relaxing. Uh, you haven't seen Detective Vecchio, have you? Uh, Ray Vecchio? Yes, the detective. Uh, no. No, I haven't. He's probably at his desk. Ah, well, uh, allow me to give you this uh, small gift from the Northwest Territories. Oh. Gee, uh, I don't know what to say. No need to say anything. Just enjoy it. Hi, ah, Lieutenant. Uh, Constable, you returned. Upon reflection, I imagine that pleases me. Well, I hope so, sir. You haven't by any chance seen Detective Vecchio, have you? Um, listen, we're gonna talk. Lieutenant, we've got a dust up in interview three, and there's a guy from the IRS says he wants to talk to you. IRS? I listen, Fraser. A couple of things I gotta do, but we have to talk. Ray! Fraser! Buddy! You have a good time up there in the Northwest areas? Uh, territories, you mean? Wilderness, huh? Exactly. Me, personally, I leave the city, I come down with this skin condition. Janie, even they thought the Friday night be a great first date. Crystal ballroom, the band, martinis, me. My dog has a foot fungus that needs some attention. All right. Is there a karmic chi love thing happening there or what? I'm sorry, uh, there seems to be some sort of uh, misunderstanding. I'm looking for Ray Vecchio. Huh? Uh, Raymond Vecchio, the detective. You talked to Welsh, right? Uh, yes, I did. Good. So we're on the right track. Look, I'm glad you're back, Fraser, because things have not been the same around here. Obviously. And you want to know why? As a matter of fact, yes, I do. Take a look back through history. What do you see? Well, any particular period of history? Nah, the whole shebang. Well, Fraser, you found him. Good. What do you see? Over and over is this. Duets, okay? Hey, Ray, what's up? Jimmy, you owe me a fin from last yeah, week. Yeah, Think yeah. about it. Lennon and McCartney, Leopold and Loeb, the Three Stooges. Strictly speaking, they were a trio, but in my opinion, they should have dropped Larry right from the start, because you could see the guy, he just was not committed to it. Anyway, I think you know what I'm talking about. No, I'm sorry, I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. Partners, Razor. Partners. Elaine, you got that stuff on the Docklands? Who are you? We're kidding around, Fraser. You know who I am. I assure you, I am not kidding around. Here you go, Ray. Files one through seven in the background on the Johnson case. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude, but I rarely forget a face, and I am very confident that you and I have never met. Now, my name is Constable Benton Fraser, Royal Canadian Mounted Police. I first came to Chicago on the trail of the killers of my father, and for reasons that, well, they don't need exploring at this juncture, I have remained attached as liaison with the Canadian consulate, and over the course of my time here, I formed what you would call a duet with a person that I am currently looking for, one Raymond Vecchio, Detective First Grade, Chicago Police Department. Raymond Vecchio, Detective First Grade, Chicago Police Department. Everyone here knows who I am, Fraser. How about you? 
Ray Vecchio. Yeah, like something off the Christmas tree? For you. Listen, what a shame about your apartment building. Homeless, huh? What an ugly word. Well, you could always move in with your friend Vecchio. I'm not at all convinced that he is my friend, actually. Oh, well, great. Then you probably won't sweat the fact that his electric blankets... Getting the family home all nice and toasty. I have no idea who you are. But if you insist on maintaining the charade of being Ray Vecchio, it may be of interest for you to know that I have reason to believe your house is about to burn down. Look, we'll take my car. Oh, please don't tell me your car is a 1971 Green Buick Riviera. Yep. Why not? Let's just play along. <laughs> Stop sign. My house could be burning down. You're worried about a stop sign? Well, it's no reason to compound a tragedy. God, stop it. Stop what? What he's doing to me, the things he's doing to me. That could be a sign of affection. Or what? Or a prelude to love. He's doing disgusting things to my ear. Get him off me. He doesn't always listen to me. As you know, he's deaf. I'll crash the car. He does read lips, so enunciate clearly. Get off me, exclamation mark. You missed our turn. I did not miss our turn. Yes, I believe you. Did. You see, ordinarily you would turn at Montclair, cut across the alley, cross Harlem, and then turn right on Octavia. Yeah, yeah, ordinarily I would do that, but ordinarily I do not have a deaf wolf trying to make intimate with me, Fraser. Besides, I'm trying to shake things up a little bit. Routine is a silent killer. I thought that was high blood pressure. Now they changed that. What? You're on vacation. Oh my god. This is unit 117. We got a code 13 at 2926 North Octavia Avenue. Right, you take the back. I'll take the front. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is a fire. We wait for the fire department. Lives are at stake. Look, pal, I don't risk my neck for you. Ray Vecchio would. I wasn't aware you could feel heat. I'm dead. I'm not insensible. What are you going to do about the Yank? Well, what do you propose I do? Collect forensic evidence to determine if he is who he claims to be. Of course he's not who he claims to be. Well, there are those who would contradict you. You might be delusional. You know, you might be delusional. Oh, that's another story. Well, there you are. You there in the building? Is there anyone else inside? Yes. Alive? I don't believe this. I know it is remarkable. Although, Horacius erratus can withstand fluctuations in temperature far greater than generally known. You went into a burning building for fish? No, not exclusively. Beef, keep an eye on them. That man just went into a burning building for fish. Oh, sure. You take that extra step for red bubble-eyed goldfish. Kramer, take the bus! shaking like a leaf. My heart's going 100 miles an hour. Fraser, feel my heart. Tell me it's not going 100 miles an hour. Franny, your heart's fine. Excuse me, Francesca, do you know this man? Yeah, of course I do. Doesn't he know? I think he's a comedian, Hardy, ha, ha, ha. So did you hear or see anything? Uh, okay, I had, uh, I had Linda Ronstadt on the tape deck, and I was in the middle of, um, of a facial peel, so no. And our brother-in-law here was in the middle of his usual 
my teeth. I had the water going. I was working on my motors, right? Next thing you know, I got a mouthful of smoke. Okay, but did you hear or see anything? I think we've already answered that. Hey, what are you doing? I don't know where you come from, but I come from this little place called America where we got this big thing called electricity. Word of advice, your tongue, electricity, not a good mix. Okay? Just come on, let's rock and roll. Hey, Fritch, you know that... Excuse me, folks. I mean, I know what, what you know, you know, and, and what everybody else knows, and, and all of that is um, known. Do, do you know what I'm saying? I have no idea what you're saying. Come on, Fraser. Excuse me. Dave, let's... Before I die of waiting? Come on. You can burn down my place of employment, you can burn down my bowling alley, you can burn down my dance hall, sure. But my place of residence, I don't think so. Hold still. What are you doing? It's not important. What is important is that we try to determine who might have had a motive for these fires. You always state the obvious? I've never thought about it. Although, you know, my Uncle Tiberius, who had a lifelong fascination with cabbage and its northern possibilities, he once remarked... Forget I asked. Don't bring up Tiberius. Understood. Well, that was good, though, measuring the yank. Thank you. For what? For driving the car. You're thanking me for driving the car? But, of course, one yank is pretty much like another anyway. Well, people are not interchangeable like snowmobile parts. There you go with the obvious again. You're right about that. What I think we should do is go back through our past history as well. Realizing, of course, that's not something you're equipped to do. What do you mean I'm not equipped to do? I, I can do that. Uh, what about the uh, uh, Bolt brothers? The Bolt brothers were not arsonists. They were demented terrorists whose M.O. involved impromptu thermonuclear devices. Right, right. I'm thinking... Uh... Other demented terrorists whose M.O. involved impromptu thermonuclear devices? No, wise guy. He's confused. Geiger. Geiger was an escaped convict sworn to vengeance on a legendary Mountie who bore an uncanny resemblance to the Canadian actor and comedian Leslie Nielsen. Who had yet received the Order of Canada. Long overdue. Morgan. Bank robbery. Herb Collin. Aging vigilante. Bodine. Gun smuggler. Although what is interesting, his partner wore a very heavy perfume. The base property, I believe, to be a combination of camphor and rose. What's the connection? Leave. Let's go. The connection? Yeah, connection. Uh, to Bodine, none. Other than the perfume. However, I did detect the odor of ambergris, a base common to many perfumes, and the electrical socket outside the Vecchio house. And the same odor was present in the rubble of my apartment building. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're telling me your apartment building was burnt down as yes. well? Yes. In all of the excitement, I neglected to mention it. Neglected to mention it? Well, the point is, the same odor was present, and I retrieved this from the rubble. Oh, great. So all we got to do is go around Chicago sticking our noses in people's pits to find somebody with the same smell. Well, that's one approach, I suppose. Elaine, did you give me thought to Friday? It'd be a great first date. Crystal ballroom, the band, martinis, moi. No. Wait a minute. The perfume is the starter, the trigger. What the hell is the name of that stuff that uh, gets the fire going? The accelerant. Accelerant! Don't say anything. Two and a half years ago, we nailed a painter named Zoltan Motherwell. At face value, it looked like uh, he was torching his lofts to cash in on the insurance money, right? Yes, but the trail widened and it revealed itself to be a pattern. Right, but he was burning down uh, uh, studios, workshops. The guy was on a psycho mission against art. Yes, and in each case, the accelerant was... Perfume! Give me five, detective. Two, two, nine, one, nine, seven. Uh, you got ink all over my fingers. Terribly sorry. What is that all about? Eh, it's just a little thing we do. Little thing we do, huh? Yeah, it's one of our little things. We have a lot of fun, don't we, you and I? <laughs> More fun than a barrel of monkeys. Very smooth, son. Thank you. Don't thank me yet. Zoltan Motherwell's in the uh, Evanston Institution for the Criminally Insane. A dead end. Maybe, maybe not. I got a hunch. You have hunches? Well, that's pretty much all I ever have. You know that, Fraser. <laughs> what about his teeth? Oh, I'm working on that. Let's go. I'm working on what? What? Okay, this is how we're gonna play this, Luke. You do the legwork, I'll hang in the background. 
be seen. Nice You'd prefer not to be seen. I'll be seen when I need to be seen. I see. I see. What does that mean? Nothing. No, when someone says I see, it means something. Oh, sorry. What? It only takes an extra second to be courteous. Up. After you. After you. Ah, thank you kindly. You're welcome. What do you mean? Well, what I mean is that civility is a quality often overlooked. No, not society. that. When you said I see, what ah. did you mean by that? Well, Ray Vecchio arrested Zoltan Motherwell. Now, if you are Ray Vecchio, he'll recognize you. If you're not, he won't. You know something? You're a Delton Thomas. You got those files I ordered? Yeah, here you go. You see? We're like a one-two punch, a duet. You set them up, I knock them down. You set them up, I knock them down. Constable, I now live a life of uh, simplicity and purpose. I couldn't live like this before when I was a slave. You understand me? Uh, no, I'm afraid I don't. Uh, you were a slave to everything, to everything: canvas, paint, dealers, galleries, fashion, falsehood. A slave. I'm telling. Come here. Closer. Closer. I think this is close enough. Until I realized it could be reduced to ashes. Wipe clean. Ah, I understand. You understand, I don't believe this. Who's he? He's a detective, apparently. My problem, Mr. Motherwell, <clears throat> is that it would appear that someone is continuing your efforts on a far more personal level. My apartment building has been burned down, leaving all of its tenants homeless. Oh, that's tragic. That's the nature of artistic movements. I was merely the, uh, the first great performance arsonist. Of course, there'd be followers, imitators, possibly school. All right, okay, I've had enough of this. You see, my friend here, he's Canadian. He's polite. He'll let you ramble on about this namby-pamby art crap. But me? I don't know what art is. But I know what I like. And you, dirt ball, I don't like. Will you? Hey, shut your trap! You look into my eyes, you look deep into my eyes. What do you see? You see the guy? Do you see the guy? The guy that put you in here? Right? 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 Good. Let's talk about this copycat torch that's walking the streets. It's got your signature, which means you know the torch. How could I possibly have anything to do with this detective? I'm incarcerated. Okay, I got a phone log here. Three phone calls made by you, two by payphone, one to 555-0188. That's a district of the Chicago Police Department. My district, my department, my phone. In fact, I picked up the phone concerning my house. Possibly. Possibly. Visitor's log. One visitor marked girlfriend with no name. Now you cough up a name or it is all aboard for fun time and I will kick your head all over this room. I think I need to see my attorney. Sure, you'll get to see your attorney right after I break your jaw. Is he gonna hit me? I think it's probably just a posture. No, no, I'm gonna break your jaw. But first, let's talk about your girlfriend. I have nothing to say. Gentlemen, five. It's ridiculous. Four. He's gonna hit me. Three. I'm sure it's a posture. Two. I could be wrong. One. No, no, wait, wait, wait. All right, what do you wanna know? How about a name? Greta Garbo. A real name! Greta Garbo's a real name. She, 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 she has a thing, an obsession with privacy. She changed it legally. Whereabouts? Last time I talked to her, she lived on Shooter Street, 271. Thank you kindly. I'm glad to help. That was just a posture, wasn't it? Yeah, sure. It's a posture. Here you go. Ray, I 
found her supply. We might be too late. I think she's planning to switch countries. How to become a Canadian in 10 easy steps. Consulate. Step one, get a big hat. Step two, lick electrical socket. Step three, uh, Constable Turnbull. Why, that's correct, sir. I am a constable, and you've reached the Canadian consulate. My name is Turnbull. Where are you going? The consulate. Or the old consulate? There's a new consulate? Attached to the consulate. Yes, as of this week, so Ray Vecchio would know. I knew that. Yes, I know who you are, Turnbull. It's right. If you know who I am, Mr. Wright, I fail to see why you're asking me who I am. I would have thought Please you... Please put Inspector Thatcher on the line. I'm sorry, but... Inspector Thatcher, in this at the moment... Turnbull! Turnbull! That man is... We better hurry. Hello? Ah, Constable Fraser, you have impeccable timing. I would appreciate Go. your opinion. Do you think Her Majesty would be happy here? Very happy, yes. Turnbull, have there been any visitors in the office today? Any couriers? Any deliveries? It's been very quiet today, sir, with the exception of the builders and movers, and a very peculiar conversation with a man named Wright. That was me, Turnbull. Ah, deliberately misidentifying yourself. Very kind, sir. This guy for real? Very much so, yes. I wouldn't go in there, sir. The inspector's in a high-level meeting with a man from Scandinavia. Would you mind telling me what brand of perfume you're wearing, sir? Will he buy it? Only if provoked. Fraser, what are you doing? Your perfume, if you wouldn't mind. Who are you? Perfume? If Ray. you'd be so kind. Thank you. Oh, the uh, palm. Of course uh, you are, Detective. Uh, deep palm. Oh. I'm so terribly sorry, sir. There's been a horrifying mistake. That would be one way of putting it, Fraser. Let me introduce you to... Sven, my interior designer. Sven, this is Constable Fraser, with whom I would like to have a word in private. So if you and Detective Vecchio wouldn't mind. I imagine, sir, that you would like something resembling an explanation. That would be a good idea, Fraser, because at this particular moment, I can assume only one of two things. Either you are mentally unhinged, or you object on principle to interior designers. Uh, no, sir, I only objected to his smell. Sven's smell? Yes, sir, Sven's smell. You see, the base property of his cologne was identical to the base property of a perfume that was used as an accelerant in two fires, one at my apartment building and one at the Vecchio house. And I had reason to believe that the consulate was the arsonist's next target. The arsonist? Yes, sir. It would appear that I am being stalked by a performance arsonist. Okay, that would qualify as an explanation. Oh, sure, people snigger. What use is the monarchy, they say? And right then and there, I know they've never experienced the horse guard on parade. Here they come. Who? Fire department. The fire! Torch, she's here! May I, uh... Yes. Thank you. Uh, do you mind if I... Good luck. Uh, may I just say, sir, and I'm by no means an expert, but that muted green with the flecks of gold, I think would be a wonderful compliment to the woodwork, the walls, and your eyes. I don't believe it. She followed us every step of the way. Up the street from my house, at the mental institution, and now here. Sandwich? We are chasing a torch, and you're thinking about food? Well, we have to keep our strength up here, bite down. Oh, wrong sandwich. What was that? Window putty. What else you got? Got any pastrami? No, I'm sorry. She's headed for the freeway. Look, I'm not blind. I can see. Okay, so now we are following you. You've been watching your handiwork, but now we are behind you. Got any roast beef? No, I'm afraid not. And you know, I really don't want to be a party pooper, but if she's been following us to witness her handiwork, she can, in theory, still do that. Ha! We are following her in a car. Well, exactly. All she has to do is look in her rear view mirror and watch us burst into flames. Burst into flames. Don't move. 
Jesus. What do you mean, don't lose her? We go up at any time. Hey, 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 what are you doing? What's trying to locate the igniter? Well, how about we stop the car and locate the igniter? She is a criminal. Stay the course. Look, you know something? You're a freak, but in spite of that, I'm going to tell you something. This may not be the best time, but I'd like to say it before we go up in smoke. And I feel a little pink about it because I realize that nobody talks to you. Number one, I'm not the guy that you think. Number two, the guy you think I am. You know, this was not my ambition to be, you know, driving in a Molotov cocktail with a Monty on the roof and, and, and a dead wolf staring at me like I was an appetizer. It just was not part of a normal desire. Not for me, anyway. I had other things in mind. Fraser! Fraser! They said he was at the night, Aunt Jolly. fell off the car. Hey! hey. Are you with me? You bet. Okay. Good. So the upshot is, I go in, they say, hey, you want a job? And, 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 uh, I go, I was weak. I was, I was down. They say, hell, I'll think about it. I'm thinking about it. And, hey, my life's not great at the moment. I think maybe I can use the change, the change the scene, the change your luck, go undercover, get in the light. They, they say, you want to work with this guy? She's taking the exit. <laughs> okay. Boy, I see no problem. That's about it. I mean, I could say more, but that's is how I got here. So what do you think? Nothing. Nothing? I spilled my guts and nothing? What are you talking about? I, what I was just saying, you didn't hear any of it? Well, no, with the wind, the speed, I'm sorry. Also, I was unable to locate the... What is she doing? She's slowing down. No! Okay, I guess we located the igniter. Yeah, it would appear so. Okay, this is where I get out. No, we cannot do that. Yes, we can, Fraser. Our work is done we here. We stay in the car. Look, Fraser, what are you doing? Do not touch my inner thigh or cat. Get your foot off the brake. I'm trying to stop. You cannot stop the car. Not when you hold on to my leg, I can't. Wait, it is too dangerous. This is a public thoroughfare. Pedestrians may be afoot. Look, I do not risk my neck for anybody. Look, the car's gonna blow. No, it is not. It is very, very, very rare that a car ever actually explodes. Mental note. Equip your vehicle with the fire extinguisher. I am all over that. We gotta find a safe place to deposit this car. Parking lot. No, it's too crowded. How about a park? There might be children present, family pets. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What? Stoplight. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. No, I'm afraid not. This is a serious business. Traffic fatalities account for the loss of 41,786 American lives every year. Uh, got it. <laughs> Good thinking. What is this, some kind of super fire? No, you shouldn't have pressed the hot wax off. Now what? Ow! The lake they call Michigan. Lake Michigan? Yes, the lake they call Michigan. Lake Michigan. All right. <coughs> Straight in? Straight in. Listen, in case something happens, I just want you to know, it's been a pleasure meeting you. Ah, so you admit we've never met. I'm not admitting anything. Hitting some ground, son. Why? Because there's nothing to admit. He's not bad for you. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. We're getting closer. I can see that. I'll say goodbye now. Well, I'll speak to you later. You bet you will. And I mean it. It's been weird, but it's been a pleasure. Likewise. Let's lock our load. Lock and load. Lock and load, I'm sorry.
He's a fine painter. Lower the gun, Miss Garbo. A great artist. Like the man said, put the gun down. And I'm carrying on his work. I said, put the gun down. called me Ray. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. Oh, yeah, you did. It was a mistake. Come on. <laughs> you know I'm Ray. Don't fight it, Benton, buddy. You are not Ray. You don't even look like you could have had plastic surgery. You could also be unhinged. I got papers to prove it. I'll show you. I don't want to see them. I'm Ray. All right, if you're Ray, where were you born? Oh, that's smart to me to get shot. Ah, uh -huh, see? See? <laughs> Lieutenant, if I could have just one moment of your time, I promise I'll be out of your hair before you can say Jimmy Crack Corn. Uh, Rudolph, would you please? Sir, I'll confess, at first I was a little worried that maybe I had a hole in my bag of marbles. So I did an impromptu investigation. I would like to present in evidence these are the registered fingerprints. And these are the fingerprints of the man in question. They do not match. This is an official dental record. This is a cast I had made of the suspect's teeth. They do not match. The shoe size is also inconsistent. And finally, as you can see, the suspect's nose is fully seven millimeters smaller than Ray Vecchio's. In conclusion, this man is not Raymond Vecchio. Constable, you have an uncanny power of observation. Thank you. Of course he's not Ray Vecchio. I've been trying to get to you to talk to you about this. Uh, there's an operation going on. This operation comes from way up the ladder. Details are kind of sketchy, but all we need to know is Ray Vecchio has gone deep undercover with the mob. Now, to protect his identity, we have to make believe that this guy is Ray Vecchio. I see. Lieutenant, have you by any chance heard from Ray? Oh, no, no, and I don't expect to either. I understand. But listen, Constable, I want you to give this guy a fair shot. He's a real good cop. And on your way out, send in my accountant. I understand. Thank you. Ah, Rudolph. Good phrase. This turned up on my desk. It's for you. What do you make of it? It's a message. Something I should worry about? No, no. No, everything's all right. Everything is actually fine. Okay. Well. Hey, Ray. Would you, uh... Would you like to go and get something to eat with me? Yeah. I just gotta, I'll, I'll put away these files and I'll meet you at the car. All right. It's good. You want my opinion? Do I have any choice? You're a good man. I think you're right. Well, we have to find somewhere to live. What do you mean, we? Well, that's a cruel joke, son. I've been thinking about an office. I think I need an office. What the hell would you do with an office? Office work, memoirs, catch up on my taxes. Taxes? been dead for two years. Oh, they find you, son. They find you. 